This video is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. So there are 42 starting points by Telltale with this game. And say you're a dumb YouTuber who does nothing but play and talk about games day and night and lose your save file somehow and can't import your save. We've got this handy dandy cheat sheet to quickly create your Clementine. And with how the last season left off, it was necessary to have your own Clementine. This season isn't labeled season three, very specifically a new frontier. A new frontier as in the faction of the little Bernie babies we meet later. Also as in a new central protagonist, Javi and an entire family around him. Plus game. And if New Frontiers interests you, then you will love to pick up this new game. Raid Shadow Legends is a super fun, easy to play game at the same time while playing another, or watching a show, or doing anything, literally. You can game all day and still focus on important tasks, which is what I love to do while playing it. Or watching a show, or literally doing anything. You can game all day and still focus on important tasks. Right now, Raid is running a fun special. We all get to vote on our favorite starter champion and win additional prizes in game and, and real life, like the ones on screen. To enter, follow what I'm doing on screen to vote. You've got from now to February 10th. The event is only for new players in the US only. Old players will get a special promo code that will give you guys some goodies too. But Raid isn't done having fun. Pro wrestling legend Ronda Rousey has entered the game as a legendary champion. New and returning players need to log in and play Raid for 7 days between now and February 20th and this Raw Woman Champion, as in real life WWE Champion, is yours. And if you haven't started playing Raid yet, what the heck are you doing? Click the link in my description or scan my QR code here on the screen and you get all these unique bonuses you see on screen worth up to $35 and you'll find all this new treasure here. Thank you Raid for sponsoring this video and now back to the Zoompies. Since this isn't a continuation of Clem's story as directly as we'd all hoped, it was smart to not call it Season 3 to set our expectations on what this story was going to focus on. And with the exhaustive amount of very different endings for season two, there was no real way Telltale was going to satisfyingly create such a branching story as to accommodate them all. That would be a momentous amount of work, as cool as it may have been. They really wrote themselves into a corner, and for what we got, it's... Well, it keeps the story going, and hurrah for that! Looking at you, Kenny and Jane flashbacks. Hey, David, I had to leave my car, it's traffic just is backed up for miles. Javi the entire game is unjustly judged by David for things he can't control. Javi just sprinted for miles to make it to the house. So, one, maybe don't be a hater on Javi for being an ex-baseball player. Probably the only reason he could run that far, David. And two, Javi just ran for miles to try and be there for his family! I really dig the new engine for this game. Going back to The Walking Dead Season 2 was a little rough to watch, and this visual uplift with the more nuanced facial animations really helped not break my immersion with things like these. It wasn't for touching kids, was it? Donde esta Javier? Donde esta mi hijo? I'm there, right beside him, holding his hand. Hmm, first it was probably being heckled for just being in the US Army, and now he's all insecure over his little brother. It's always the biggest dudes around, right? Why, why are you fighting? One more word in your next game! If I had a dollar for every time I could take or refuse someone's hand in a Telltale game, I'd have enough for a McDonald's meal. It's not a lot, but I'm right in this hungry. Javi doesn't drink it, uses it to ice his wound. We've already got David drinking. Shows us how these two really are. Who is really the bigger brother? Because throughout, Javier seems to be constantly putting David in his place and making up for his mistakes. Whereas David, on the other hand, <laughs> also that one deals directly with problems and David avoids and doesn't talk about them, which can be very indicative of his years of service. You think I was jealous of you. Well, I was. But hey, a traumatic event might be just what we need to kickstart a little bit of character development in our lives. You think in my service, you. I really dig the cross-cutting between the game and the opening credits. It accomplishes two things. Getting the credits out of the way in a more engaging manner and raises the tension of Grandpa getting hungry. People's awake. And on the line of our first walker and a new frontier, we get our title card. For, you know, The Walking Dead. It's been a while since The Walking Dead had any really horror elements, but a little girl, a shadow, and a sound of a walker, plus the dramatic irony of them not knowing what's coming, kept me on the edge of my seat, seeing if they were about to just off a kid right from the start. Sorry for the choppy footage, by the way. We all know how much of a win Telltale's engines are. Like how when it's really hitting the fan, they all switch into Spanish. <laughs> David? Maybe if you were a Marine and not Army, you wouldn't have just been beaten by an old man. I respect the military, it's all just jokes with how much heckling the army gets from the other branches. Tall out. The animation work is also quite the step up. I'm fresh off playing the final season and it seems to have really peaked here with the new frontier. Get the kids, meet at the hospital. Don't take the highway, it's blocked. Can we please just get a zombie story that almost exclusively hangs out around the fall and not always time skip? And I mean like, 
a whole season or game, not just like a little bit. It's so interesting every time I see it, I like in Fear the Walking Dead or the opening of The Last of Us. I want to see governments fall, goddammit! Oh, what's that have to do with this game? I'm a sucker for these sequences, so just hearing the highways blocked gets me all riled up. And that's where it really starts hitting the fan. When you've got infected people hitting up hospitals that haven't already been strapped down for acting crazy. That's a damn effective intro. We're introduced to our entire main cast and get an idea of their relationships with some fun dramatic irony of them not understanding zombies in just under 10 minutes. We know David's a little jealous asshole, Javi's that dude, Cave Def wants a bite out of him, Mariana's incident and totally gonna survive the apocalypse, and Gabe's annoying. All the tape, the pots hanging, the bought up window really shows how much they've lived in this van. And judging by how much older the kids are, we get how uncomfortable it must be. That this is definitely not a Janelle Eliana van. I can't believe you found weed. For everyone that makes fun of my subtitles to be off sometimes, here you go! Even big companies do it. Let's pull a classic YouTuber and shift blame. Sean, how could you mess this up? I quit. I suppose it did. <sighs> do you miss him? Telltale's The Walking Dead has always had some of the best ambient music in the game. Always so calm and reassuring. The second you start getting boners, the whole world starts to get dark. Or a whole lot wider. I mean lighter. I need to get laid. No, oh, I can pull over. It wouldn't take a minute. I mean, I don't think you understand how that sounds. Right now, we just think she's tossing her sleep. But homegirl's grossed out right now. Okay, now I'm sorry I did that. Telltale puts the most superfluous things to look at in their games, but at least sometimes it makes me chuckle. Hey, Gabe, let's go take a look over there. Trying to evolve the kid, even if you don't really want to. It's like when your parents would force you to go hang out with a weird neighbor kid, and this is the neighbor's kid. And if muertos were to somehow surround us. Muertos means dead. I like it. Zombies don't traditionally exist in the universe, and everyone has different names for them. Like the Woodbury crew, you know, before. Called them biters. Yeah, well, you owe me like a dozen. What? Like 12 minutes of your life you won't get back? Look, I, I, I get it, all right. Oh, heck yeah. I love when our bad guys aren't just a dot, but a whole ass cube. <laughs> Holy shit. Okay, I have no idea why he dropped the gun, if not for Telltale needing the story to go in a certain way, and this was the least ever. Like, Javi is not the kind of guy to throw away his advantage. I would remove a win, but doing so would make the counter like one of the previous ones didn't even happen. And we can't forget and roll over on the good things in life because there is some bad in it. There's your fortune cookie wisdom. Do with it how you may. But yo, check it out. They were wearing seatbelts. I wonder if there's a character later who's been a father to many kids that will forget about them while teaching someone how to drive. All right. That's good. I couldn't be the only one hyped when we heard Melissa Hutchinson's voice. Finally, the story is getting interesting. She will remember that. Who was Telltale trying to fool? Give him points for trying, though. Aw, she's all grown up. Now don't do anything stupid, because I'll shoot a lot quicker than you did. Damn, not only is she older, she turned into a little badass. They're going all in on Clem being the bad guy. Eating an apple and everything. Also, seeing Clem right now gets our heads spinning about where the heck is AJ? Or Jane? Or Kenny? Though Jane was a piece of shit and I will die on this hill, she did teach Clem one thing. Muertos. Clem slash Melissa doesn't put an accent when saying muertos. I've heard that doing so just sounds so dumb, if not insulting to those that actually speak that way. How do you guys feel about it? Walkers. Well, what do you call the ones that run? They're all f***ing walkers, okay? Love Clem's new potty mouth, too. And wait, let's just back up a second. The ones that run? You want to clarify that? God effing damn it, Francine. One of these days, those doors are going to close and your ass will be on the other side. Now, that's some Francine's going to be stuck on the other side of the door shadowing, if I've ever heard some. And when that day comes, Trip. And like his namesake, he's tripping. This ain't no way to do business. <clears throat> and, and this is the biggest problem with uh, New Frontier. We have a massive bias towards Clem and make decisions based on our relationship with her and not any shared feelings we might hold for someone with Javi makes him feel like less his own character and more of a player insert. Clem, come on. He knows the bullets don't work. Listen to him. He's not even nervous. He's just got a good poker face, a la the game that was just played at the bar. His gasp shows that he didn't actually know. What I need are bullets that won't get me killed. Now, that's the first oh shit moment of the game. Not even five minutes in Prescott, we've already aided in murder. The apocalypse is most likely boring as fuck and not full to the brim with all the shit our characters gotta deal with if you think about it. But Eli was a grade A certified dipshit. I'll even have someone come take a look at that cut. It's refreshing not having survivors constantly be on edge and mistrusting of newcomers. Trip is up there as the best additions to the cast, right there next to Javi. But I still trust Trip more than I trust her. Clem's instincts turns out to be 100% correct with the way Eleanor turncoats in Richmond. You know, when I met you, 
I thought you'd just be another asshole like everyone else. It is kind of nice not playing as Clem in this game for most of it. We fell in love with Clem in the first game because of the person she was, not who we made her to be. And now seeing her post season two, we kind of get to do that all over again. Hey, what you drawing there, goofball? That's gonna come back around and make us cry, isn't it? So here is where we'll get the flashbacks to the most hastily wrap up you've ever seen in your life. It's not great. Kenny just dies because of the dumbest reason in a car accident. Jane commits forever sleep and reinforces that I was totally right about her in my last video and that's why I'm winning it. I reference to Judith's actual fate in the comics with Lori. Is stealing my brother's wife not the most messed up funny plot line you've ever seen in a zombie apocalypse story or what? Oh wait, you already kind of did that with Shady Rick? Well, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Hey, you hurt yourself. You must have scraped it in the truck. Didn't even notice. Yep, doesn't surprise me. Thanks. <laughs> Jesus, tell tell, why'd you have to do us like that? Why couldn't it be the other one? Uh-oh, Kate's ring is off and Hobby walks up to her, visually telling us that this interaction isn't going to be marred by her marriage. You'll be jet-setting and I'll still just be here. It's on the nose, but I can't help but appreciate the visual storytelling. Kate's dialogue with her ring in focus, having her shatter a glass of David's. All such a great way to clue us in on what's really going on without outright saying, Javi, my marriage is falling apart. I already dug a grave for her. Clementine really can't help but just be the best, can't she? And, and like a daughter to me. People like to shit on New Frontier for its lack of lesser story, but I don't know. The little brother who steps up to become the father of his brother's family has a lot of legs for an engaging story. And when we meet David later, I was actually all in. I couldn't leave you alone. That's because... The player's known her for about 20 hours. They call themselves the New Frontier. That's a bit of a twist from what I'm sure all of us are expecting a New Frontier to mean. I can take you back to Prescott, make sure your family's okay. But then I'm hitting the road. Kinda like Kenny. The Prescott theme really resonated with me this season. It stands out so much as a New Frontier's theme for me. Like I mentioned earlier, calm and reassuring, which is in short supply in the apocalypse. I just ran away like a stupid little kid. I've been giving Gabe a lot of shit, mostly undeserved. Deltel did him dirty in this game, leaning too hard on the naive angsty teen angle, but the spirit of what Gabe represents really resonates with me. And there are some good moments for him, like here, seeing him process and grow after Mariana's death. Lock a bomb, certified hood classic among the walking dead. That gate ain't bulletproof. Don't make me prove it. Back to the matter is this entire conversation we've got Max giving the worry as to Mr. Tricky Happy. I like that he's doing the worst things for reasons that sound almost noble. Kinda, right? I just need an excuse to use that clip. You need someone else to talk to that understands what you're going through. Puberty, am I right? I once slapped a kid in the sixth grade because he looked at me funny. I still kind of feel bad about that one after all these years. I'm still quite impressed that these performances are only maybe going off of reference footage from the recording booths of the voice actors. All these animators need to handcraft every little reaction, every little eyebrow twitch and squinted eye. I've said it so many times, animators are actors. Probably understand the human face and what reactions match with what performance better than even the actors themselves. Awfully convenient the pass is blocked like this. Not convenient at all, if you ask me. Conrad went to the direct school of English. Yo, Telltale finally found a way of making Walker Claire feel like it should. Fast, efficient, and really not that difficult. No, don't get on them. You're supposed to get under them. I guess it's safe to assume with how great a survival Jesus is, he always keeps two pairs of the exact same clothing, just in case he might need to make a decoy himself when surrounded by a horde of walkers on a building with an unknown threat screaming at him from across the street, a situation that we all find ourselves in. <gasps> Anything just because you bring in a legacy character from the comic slash show that we're all going to sound like you're not titled season three season? Well, that's exactly right. This isn't how Jesus sounded in my head in the comics, but I really dig it and I love Jesus. So I love this. Knowing Jesus from the comics, you're really going to need all those guns to restrain him. This is another situation where our bias is coming to harm rather than help the story. As cool as it is to see Jesus in the story, Herschel from season one did it better as we really didn't have any altercation where we truly needed to cast judgment on him and it worked much better than Clem or Jesus. Win for season one, I guess. Good job, Telltale. It's Paul, but my friends call me Jesus. With this flashback coming off his introduction, I love the idea that the Lord above sent Clem into shock about her past with the new frontier. Really feeling like she needs to hit the church up on Sunday. <laughs> I was hoping they would do it, Andy. You crazy son of a you're dead. This is alive inside from the first season, a track that played all the time when Lee and Clem were being all cute together. I'm not, you know, the biggest fan of children, but AJ is pretty cute. It's not the whole truth. Ooh, Conrad dropping some eaves. I was... I was one of them. If you wanted to ratchet the stakes, well, there you go. Clementine being our most beloved character and the bunch having a history with our bad guys and possibly being one of them? 
What's not to love? There's that ninja Jesus that was sorely missing in the TV show. She used to be part of the new frontier. I just don't know what the hell is going on anymore. Trip is just that good guy that's there for the ride. Not exactly knowing what's going on, but trying his best. Practicing on walkers or whatever the f they do. See what I mean? Jesus, how far is it to their compound? Oh, they're friends. That girl your people shot, that was her daughter. I feel pretty confident appealing to Max's humanity through not anything he explicitly said, but more of his reactions to the world around him, and that's something Telltale does well. Is it a little heart on the sleeve -y most of the time? Kinda, but I don't mind it. These first two episodes feel like twist after twist after shock, and I really dig the plot. Imagine if we had some rearranging of the characters we already knew from the first two seasons. You know you'd be all over it. Either way, I like this. Dave and Javi's relationship is the beating heart of this game, and I'm glad they didn't waste too much time getting him back in there. I didn't think it would trend having each episode start with a flashback, but I like it. it. Helps us start somewhere more engaging than just playing right where we left off. Plus, with giving more context to our principal character's lost style. Okay, if we're lucky, we won't see a single one of those things. Without even telling us, those things dates exactly when we are in the outbreak. Check out the frame. It's the motel we stayed in at season one. If I need any help, I'll just ask my friends. Yeah, about that. <laughs> Ooh, blowing the light out on their marriage. Cute and sad that Mari goes for her teddy. In this world, there is no room for innocence. Dad? Javi. Damn, doesn't even notice Gabe and goes straight for Javi. More signs on how he was as a father. Hey. What is she, flirting with me? Hey. Hey. <laughs> Jesus goes from startled to pulling on that sweet man goofy grin. Love Jesus. David might not be perfect, but he's still got the simple dad stuff down. Kate's desire to run from this place stems directly from her experience feeling trapped in a cage with David. And now that David is back and running security, you can imagine how compounded that feeling inside her must be. She's wanted to escape David her whole marriage, and not even safety and security can mask the trauma she harbors from her loveless marriage. Strange how it just comes and goes. What are you trying to say? I'm worried about her? Our little flirtationship with Kate makes every little thing David says seem to be under that context. Even when Homeboy has no clue that we're totally taking this girl. Raises the tension in every interaction with him. So the logo for The New Frontier is mostly rooted in cut content, but there are still some interesting things we could draw from it. The slaughterhouse we visit later in this episode used to be called the Capricorn Farms. They would bring people in to be slaves and brand them with the Capricorn astrological sign. Particularly the 76 version of it. But all of that was cut. Also, if you believe slash care about astrology, David fits perfectly into the general things of Capricorn is, just like how everyone is perfect for their sign. But it's harmless fun in this video. So, Capricorns, they happen to be reserved with their emotions, determined. Once they're attached, they hold on as tight as they can, and a natural-born leader, all traits David has. Or it looks like the number 76, as in 1776. Independence Day for the US, and Richmond is like the first colony taken back from the Redcoats slash Walkers. Did I just compare the British to Walkers? Maybe, but can you blame you when they've got similar leaking teeth? <laughs> Sorry, Sean, I love you. You look pretty, but it's all sugars. There's no substance. Damn, are they just calling out their own game with that line, aren't they? Of the essential superiority of his cream spinach over my magnificent black forest gateau. It's no contest. The spinach has real nutritional value. In case you weren't sure that Joan is not the leader that Richmond needs, homegirls just waste the resources baking cake instead of like, literally making anything else. Some of your people, they keep me awake. In fact, some of them give me nightmares. My people? I'm sorry, Javi, I don't quite follow. Well, here they come on cue to help you out. No, David, this cousin f***ing dirtbag. Oh my god, Javi is not holding back. Send them out with enough weapons to defend themselves, but no more. I'll give Jill that. She's not completely heartless. Yet. Aw, David grabbed Javi's bed and held on to it all this time. Always a mess, ain't it? What's that? Who you love, who loves you. Ain't that the freaking truth. Clem to the rescue. Not just of Javi, but of my boredom. I also understand them not having Clem be playable during AJ's toddler years as creating gameplay and story beats with our principal character being weighed down by something that can't even walk or defend itself would have been quite difficult. Better to just time skip to the more interesting part of when AJ's figuring out what kind of person he wants to be. A lion inside, it's a lion inside playing. <laughs> Teamwork. Did you let him turn? Yeah, Clem. This is not the little girl I remember about lying about tasting the salt lick. Did you lick it? I don't know. There, there's stuff here from the kingdom. Kingdom fan service. David, come on, man. We're a unit. Trying to appeal to his military loyalty. 
Was I really hoping for a climactic moment with the baseball bat to call back to his old years playing for Baltimore? Yes. But he put that life behind him and went for the more practical route. Where you'll go to get Kate and Gabe, then bring them to my house. It's the one with the raven on the hitching post. Ravens very often are an ill omen. Bringing Kate to David's house is the last thing she wants. <laughs> Finally, a decision of David's I can get behind. Oh, come on. Don't be a wuss. <laughs> I used to tell you the same thing. Appealing to David's, um... Toxic masculinity? Things between me and Kate have been going downhill for a while. For all the shit I give David, we finally get to see his perspective on things, which was sorely missing up to this point. Having him seeing their marriage going south instead of just the oblivious husband who could do no wrong almost makes me empathize with him. Almost. If I go, it's going to be hard on everyone. Kate may need help from time to time. We are getting exact confirmation on why he didn't go back to the house after the outbreak. He saw this as a golden opportunity to do what he wanted to do. He mentioned going back to the military in this scene and said that once the world fell, he hooked up with his old unit. He did leave, just as he said he would. You boys want to make it out of here. Just relax and trust in the process. You can see why David really took to this place, just following orders no matter what. Going with the Independence Day idea, the New Frontier has placed their logo where the stars once went on the US flag being the first new state of their new frontier. Javi, I, I don't know if you heard us, but I think I f***ed it up with Eleanor. Really? Now, Trip? You make them in a split second, and then have to carry them the rest of your life. You understand? Telltale trying to pitch th what their games are about. Freeze! You know I gotta win the sauce? I started bleeding. I know it's a thing. Actually, this is the one. You know, I gotta win the sauce. <laughs> Yo, if we're gonna bully Abby about being jacked in the apocalypse, it's only fair that we bully Javi for being ripped after years of malnourishment. Ain't no way he's actually looking like that. But, uh, showing off to your new friend. Basically, all this means is you could become a mom if you wanted. Funny. I already felt like a mom. Crazy how fast Clem had to grow up. Before she could even physically be a mom, she was one. Clementine is truly like no other Apocalypse character we've had in recent times. When AJ recovered, David was the one who stepped up. David and Javier both become some stepdaddies. Mm, good to see you. Clem's reaction. <laughs> she knows so hard that that boy is smitten. Ooh, a matte painting. Something that isn't used very often anymore, but always looks so good. You said it wasn't that bad. It isn't. Girlie is getting told off by a 13 year old. If we get to save dad, then getting hurt is worth it. It's worth dying for. Sealed your own fate with that one, bud. It's nice to be driving around with a couple kids in the back seat again. Woman stole my win from me. Kind of amazing, isn't it? That in the middle of all this, they find time to flirt with each other. Guess it just goes to show. You stick two people together, something's going to happen between them. I hope I don't get stuck on the road with my sister in that case then, Kate. You're so sure of what you're doing all this for. You didn't run away. There's an entire arc for Hobby where he's never there and always runs from his problems. And when we get into the game proper, he's already gone through all his growth to be there for Kate and the kids no matter what, leaving a very stagnant story throughout. And from the start, and even shown in flashbacks, Kate is already into Javi, so there really isn't much legs for that to run on either, since it's already a surefire thing. And there isn't even a will they, won't they. There is just, is the player going to romance her or not, which isn't really that engaging, at least for me. And maybe that's just a problem with choice-based games and I'm being a little bit too harsh. But for me, these two things coupled with the plot trying to have these epic moments with combat and battle, which these games are not suited for, then have Clem not be a central character of this game. And it's obvious why New Frontier is where a lot of people dropped off. For what it's worth though, the foundation Telltale has here for the Garcia family is as solid as it could ever be. And this is completely handicapped, I believe, being forced to jump years into the outbreak. The reason I just mentioned is why it seems the, the depth and amount of wins seems to be a bit different from other games. Someone to be proud of, someone who sticks around. And this could have been the concluding moment in his arc where he becomes the man he was always meant to be and the one that David could never be for Kate. At the very least, we are still getting this nice calm before the storm of Richmond imploding. My man's just broke bro code like no other bro could. Or did I? Kate's a catch. You've put me in a no-win situation here. Little did we know just how exactly of a no-win situation this was. Okay, I need you to cover me. We gotta make things right. Okay. Now look who's not being there and running away. Oh God. 
Javi, you've got to get over there before. The framing and Clem being cut off really transports us into that exact feeling of helplessness as Javier really well. While we're still breathing, Javi. A couple seconds thinking this is the apocalypse and oh, they're just playing dominoes. Oh Basically the same thing. So sorry. Be sorry for your domino skills. Paz already accepted his fate. How bad is it? You won't have to worry about paying me back that 10 bucks. <laughs> Old people always have such a morbid sense of humor. You are a coward. Talk about the pot calling the kettle black. I'll be pulling the good old Gears of War. When I ask my barber for a little off the top. Kate, I'm so glad Javi, you're- thank God you're all right. This is awkward. Everyone from Prescott is dead. Wow, Clem really wasn't a part of their merry band, was she? I was triaging a bad situation. A doctor using doctor talk to sew up her conversation. <laughs> Coming in from downtown, Delta was doing a really great job at making David the main villain of the story. We had Joan and some piece of shit members of Richmond, but throughout, David has been the main antagonist. Having it be a family member of ours makes it all the more complicated and more engaging. Why don't you show a little follow through, David? Everyone hold back. Let Javi and I clear out these walkers. David says walkers. Delta didn't just go, all the Hispanic characters say muertos, which I appreciate. I'm sorry, I had to. I've been thinking about it every time. My childhood, right there, boys and girls. We should go lightest to heaviest. That way it won't break on the first swing. I'll go first, Clem. Is he calling her fat? <laughs> no, he knows she's the lightest and is willing to take the fall for her. He's my father, Clem. I'm sorry, but he really wouldn't understand. You wanna f***ing bet? I won't let what happened to Mariana happen to you. Just in case we thought that David had a chance of changing, like he mentioned on the rooftop conversation. Some people can't break their nature, and especially being in the military, that gets ingrained in his head. I know a losing battle when I see one. Took a while to see your marriage losing. Ooh, got him. David, no! I know I'm fighting David and all, and that's cool, but this score is kind of going hard right now, no? About time that David's soldier background comes in to overpower someone. Yo, Jesus coming in with that trademark kingdom armor. I think I'm getting the hang of this. Potato Boy would be proud. I think I'm getting the hang of this. Potatoes. The Walking Dead can almost give Tomb Raider a run for its money with how gory its death scenes can be. Also, let's not forget to mention Jesus' beautiful man bun. Yeah, the pace of this game compared to the others is insane. The last episode is only an hour long, but glad they just got to the point instead of padding it out for no real reason. G give me your gun, Javi. <coughs> I don't want it. I'll give Gabe this. At the end, he was a little baby boy and became the man he wanted to be. <laughs> no game. Telltale lets us do what we've been wanting to do this entire game. Truly a masterpiece. You may not be my father, Javi, but you are a great dad. That line will always get me no matter the context. He may have been your father, boy, but he wasn't your daddy. Also, just want to use this moment to tell you how sad I am that the music in the following moment of that Guardian scene doesn't use the same track from Volume 1 when Quill cool saves Gamora. Such beautiful music and would have been a powerful callback to when he saved Quill the first time. Anyway, back to the game. What is this, Halo ODST? Let's start a family. You and me. Oh my god, girl got out of being a stepmother so she finally can have her own kids. Why do I feel like this is actually happening in real life? You're a real charmer. You know that through and through. Oh, you know what they say. Takes one to no one. I ship it. It's time. I have to find AJ Javi. Alive Inside is Clem's theme for sure, and anyone else whom she gets close to. The theme brings me back to my childhood when I first watched Nova play through season one, and it gives me this warm wave of nostalgia every time. Who could forget you, Clem? No one who knew you, I guarantee it. An unintended foreshadowing to the character who comes back in the final season, I'm sure. Well, how's it look? I'd say by the final season, she really rocks it. Bring him back. Anything you tell me, father. Jess Sheen's got a beautiful voice. Have I mentioned that yet? I don't even blame Kate. You know I love me some center framing. A New Frontier is for sure the most divisive of The Walking Dead seasons. For all the reasons, if not more, that I've already mentioned. By this time in Telltale's life, they were definitely struggling and spreading themselves too thin. After the success of The Walking Dead, every IP wanted to license themselves out to Telltale, hoping they would capture that same lightning for them. And Telltale bit off way more than they could chew. Having commitments to these other companies gave little time for engine improvements, time to focus on any individual game, and most importantly, less time to really hone in on the scripts and make the player choice angle really feel impactful, which kind of is their entire MO. You could really feel the pressure Telltale was under with A New Frontier and other Telltale games that were released around this time. 
the story was much shorter than we're used to, and the plot really was too Richmond-centric. The story didn't really evolve once we met David, making the last three episodes feel quite static. And to top it all off, we didn't have much Clem, who is the beating heart of this series. It's a shame that many outside factors plagued a new frontier with how much we all enjoyed the first two seasons. Through its flaws and the poor mismanagement of the studio, we did get two good things out of the game. Clem's character remains intact, and her growth felt really natural, and it's nice to see her more independent. And then Javi. I really liked Javier. Maybe it's because he's got his brother to be compared to, so no matter what he did, he'd always seemed a better brother. But overall, he's just decent. Such as his true fatherly nature, like when he was cutting Clem's hair. I know what they were trying to get at, and it would have worked if Clem and Hadi had more of a buildup in the relationship. But still enjoyed the callback, though. A New Frontier really wasn't my favorite, and possibly at the bottom of all the Telltale games I've ever played. Which is a shame, but not everything can be the first season of The Walking Dead. There was a lot of expectations and a very high standard set by the first two seasons that was not going to be very easy to clear. And through all the turmoil and crunch, I really feel for the employees over at Telltale and I hope they found healthier homes and other studios and continue to use their talents. What did you all think of this season? I'm sure you got a lot of thoughts. Let me know down below. And remember, drive the speed limit, drink some water, and love one another. Pizza!